Welcome to the next lesson of the mathematics. In today's lesson, we will talk about Leibniz theorem. This theorem is about the nth differential coefficient, that is the nth differential coefficient of product of two functions. So let's see, which is the statement of the Leibniz theorem. If u and v are two functions of same variable x, then the nth differential coefficient of the product of these two functions can directly be obtained by this statement. So this is d to the power n u, that is nth differential coefficient of u producted by v plus nc1, this is the combination, d n minus 1 u, that is the n minus 1th differential coefficient of u producted by dv, that is the first differential coefficient of the function v. Let me remind you here d is basically equal to d upon dx. So if we'll say that if it is d square, that means d square will be equal to d2 upon dx square and so on plus nc2 dn minus 2u that is n minus 2th derivative of u dot producted by second derivative of u v plus and so on and in the same way if we replace this uh, with r some variable then ncr n minus 1 r dot dr v plus and so on and the last term will be u dot dn v as we can see here in the first function d to the power n u then it is decreasing to d to the power n minus 1 u then it is dn minus 2 u and so on dn minus r u and lastly it will be d to the power 0 u in the same way uh, the differential coefficient for v is an increasing order d to the power 0 u then uh, we can d to the power 0 v and then we can see d to the power 1 v d to the power 2 v d to the power rv and lastly d to the power nv. So the differential coefficient here in u is in decreasing order from n to 0 and differential coefficient for v is an increasing order from 0 to v and this constant coefficient is uh, again it is in decreasing order nc1 uh, and then this is increasing nc1, nc2, and then we have nc3 and so on, ncr and lastly it will be ncn. So now let's see how we are going to prove this Leibniz theorem. Just to prove this Leibniz theorem, we will be using the concept of mathematical induction. So what is mathematical induction? Basically in here we suppose that the equation is true from some small values of n. right? So we see whether this is true for some small values of n. If it is true, then we assume that it is true for some larger value of n, let's say m. And then we'll prove that the equation is also true for m plus 1. So we are going to perform these uh, three steps. So let's see what is the step number 1. We'll put n is equal to 1 in equation 1 and verify whether the equation is true or not. If it is true, then we'll move ahead. Step number two, we'll put n is equal to two in equation number one again, and we'll verify whether this equation is true or not. If these two statements, that is we are using small n, if these two statements gives us the result that the equation is true for n is equal to one as well as for n is equal to two, then we'll go to step number three, and we assume that the equation is true for some value of n is equal to m. And then with the help of this third statement, we'll go to the step number four and verify that the equation is also true for n is equal to m plus one. And then we can conclude or we can say that the equation is proved. So let's start with the step number one where we need to put n is equal to one in equation number one and verify. So this is the equation number one. Putting n is equal to one means the first derivative of the product of u and v. So let's do it. Uh, first of all, I would like to evaluate the first derivative of the product of these two functions. So that will be d to the power 1 u dot v. This is the first derivative of the product. We'll simply apply the product rule. So uh, according to the product rule, we'll have uh, 
du first derivative of the first function dot v plus then we'll have u and derivative of the second function. So this is a simple product rule if you remember that this is d by dx u dot v then we used to write d by dx u dot v plus u dot d by dx of v using the product rule. So uh, the first derivative of the product of these two functions comes to be du dot v plus u dot dv. Now let's verify this with equation number one just by substituting n is equal to one here. If we'll substitute n is equal to one here, this will be du dot v. So the first term is du dot v. Now if we'll substitute n is equal to one here, this will be one c one d to the power 1 minus 1 u that is d to the power 0 u and this is dv. So 1c1 is always 1 d to the power 0 u that is u only and dv. So we have a uh, 1 dot u dot dv. So we can see here 1 dot u dot dv. So we can say that this equation is true for n is equal to 1. So the step number one says that the equation is true for n is equal to one. Now let's jump to the step number two where we'll put n is equal to two in the same equation and then we'll verify. So now let me derive the second derivative first of u dot v. So just to get second derivative, what we can do is we can get the derivative of the first derivative. So we have already evaluated the first derivative. So we'll apply this uh, derivative on the first derivative. So this is duv plus u dot dv. So I can replace here instead of this, this is du dot v plus u dot dv. And on this, I need to apply the derivative again. So this will be, uh, I'll apply the product rule here. So this will be d2u dot v as it is, then plus du dot dv. So this is the product rule on the first term. Then we'll apply a differential coefficient on this uh, second term. This will give us du dot dv plus u dot d2v. Summing up, this can be written as uh, d2u dot v plus, we can see we have du dot dv, du dot dv. This will be twice of du dot dv plus u dot d2v. So this is the equation and now let's verify whether we can get this with the help of the equation number one or not by putting n is equal to two. So let's go back in equation number one and see if I substitute n is equal to two here. So this will be d2 u dot v, which is the first term d2 u dot v. Then we have a n c1 dn minus one u dot dv. So if I'll substitute n is equal to two here, so this will be two c1 dn minus 2, d2 minus 1, that is du and then dv, 2c1, du, dv. So we have here 2c1, so we have 2c1, du dot dv. And we can see this is 2 can also be written as 2c1. So 2c1 can be written, 2 can be written as 2c1. How? Let me show you. The formula for this combination is factorial 2, by factorial 1 by factorial 1 minus 1. If you remember, we used to write ncr as factorial n by factorial r factorial n minus r. So using this formula, 2c1 can be written as factorial 2 by factorial 1 dot factorial 1 minus 1. So this will be factorial 2 upon 1 factorial and factorial 0. So this will be 2, we know factorial 1 is 1 and we know factorial 0 is also 1. So this is coming 2. So 2 can be rewritten as 2c1. So here 2 du dot dv can be written as 2c1 du dot dv plus we have a u dot d2v and here we have d2u dot v. So we can see this is also according to the equation. So we can see that this is also true for n is equal to 2. So from the first two steps, we get to know that this equation is true for n is equal to 1 as well as for n is equal to 2. Now comes the step number 3. So now we'll substitute n is equal to m and we'll assume that this equation is also true for n is equal to m. 
So now let me put uh, n is equal to m. So this will be dm u dot v. This will be equal to dm u dot v plus this is mc1 dm minus 1 u dot dv plus mc2 dm minus 2 u dot d2 v plus and so on and the last term will be u dot dm v. So let's uh, consider this as equation number 2 and we have we are assuming that this equation number is true. Now we'll go to the step number four and uh, maybe we'll be taking the help of this assumption that this is true for n is equal to m. We'll go to the step number four and then we need to prove that this is also true for n is equal to m plus one. So now let me write uh, d m plus one u dot v. This uh, we need to prove and again this is dm plus 1 that can be achieved by differentiating this equation number 2 once again because this is the mth derivative. So we can achieve dm plus 1 just by uh, differentiating this equation number 2 once again. So let's differentiate this equation number 2 once again. So now we can see that on differentiating this we need to apply uh, let me write it here. So we are obtaining dm plus 1 u dot v. So this will be d of dm u dot v plus d of m c 1 m minus 1 u dot du dv and again plus d of m c 2 d of m minus 2 dot d2 v and plus lastly d of u dot d m v. So now let's uh, differentiate this equation. Again we'll use the product rule. So product rule on dm u dot dv this will be d of m plus 1 u dot v differential of the first function. So if it is dm u again differentiating it will give you div dm plus 1 u plus first function as it is dm dot dv plus let's jump to this uh, second uh, term this is a constant mc1 we can keep it out this is mc1 and again on differentiating this is uh, d to the power m minus 1 u so now this will be d to the power m u and this will be d to v plus so this will be dv right now this will be the product so we have we are applying here the product rule so now this will be dv only and then plus again we will have mc1 and this time this will be dm minus 1 u dot d2v plus and so on and let's differentiate this last term so this will be d u dot d m v plus u dot d of m plus 1 v. So you can see uh, on differentiating this equation once again and now we just need to align them. So let's align them. So let me write in a better way. This will be d of m plus 1 u dot v. So now we can see that this is the second term d of m u dot d of v and here it is d of m u dot d of v. So we can sum these two terms and this will give us and here we have m c this is 1 can also be written as m c 1. So now we will sum this so we have d m u dot d v this is 1 plus m c 1. 1 plus mc1 and so on and uh, let's take the last term so this will be u dot d of m plus 1 v now let's rewrite this 1 plus mc1 what will be this 1 plus mc1 so let's write 1 plus factorial m 
This is divided by factorial 1 dot factorial m minus 1. So now we can see we can take the uh, LCM of this and this uh, will be factorial of m minus 1 plus factorial of m divided by factorial of m minus 1. Now this can be rewritten as a factorial of m minus 1 plus m dot factorial of m minus 1 divided by factorial of m minus 1. So we can take this factorial of m minus 1 as common and this is in denominator also. So we will be left with 1 plus m. So this can be written as 1 plus m and now 1 plus m can also be written as m plus 1 c1. We have already seen that for any number n c1 is always equal to n. So if we have m plus 1 c1 this is m plus 1. So taking from your m plus 1 I'm rewriting it as m plus 1 c1. So let me rewrite this statement here. This will be d of m plus 1 u dot v plus now this is m plus 1 c1. So now this will be d of m u dot d v plus and so on and I can take the last term u dot d of m plus 1 dot v. So this is the equation coming after differentiating once again and let's see whether we can get this according to the equation just by substituting m plus 1 in the equation number 1 or not. So we can see this is the equation number 1 and we are taking here instead of n we are taking m plus 1. So this will be d of m plus 1 u dot v the first term. So now let's see this is the first term right this is d of m plus 1 u dot v. In the second term we need to substitute n c1 instead of n we will substitute m plus 1. So this will be m plus 1 c1 and instead of n we will have uh, m plus 1 minus 1 so we will have only m. Right, so we just need to substitute this n with the help of uh, m or we need to replace this n with m. So now we can see, let me rewrite this original equation. This is dn u dot v. This is equal to dn u dot v plus we need to write nc1 dn minus 1 u dot v plus and so on. And let me write the last term. This will be u dot d to the power n v. So now we'll replace this n with m plus 1. So this will be d of m plus 1 u dot v. This will be equal to d of m plus 1 u dot v plus. This is m plus 1 c1 d of m plus 1 minus 1. So m plus 1 and minus 1 will be cancelled out u dot v. This will be u dot uh, d v this time. So this has to be d v right so this will be u dot d of v plus and so on then u dot d of m plus 1 v now we can see this equation which is arriving just by substituting n is equal to m plus 1 in the equation number 1 is equal to the this equation which we have uh, evaluate by uh, the assumption that the equation is true for d is equal to m for n is equal to m and then by uh, getting this m plus 1. So we can conclude by mathematical induction that this theorem is true for the getting nth differential coefficient, nth differential coefficient of the product of two functions u and v. Yes, both the functions have to be the functions of the same variable x. So that's it for today's lesson. In the next lesson, we will use some examples and see how we can use this Lebanese theorem to get the differential coefficients of the functions directly. Let's say we'll talk about that how we can get d to the power 6, uh, let's say x to the power 5 sin x. So this is the product of two functions and this is the nth differential coefficient. So we'll see uh, some of these type of equations and how we can find these uh, nth differential coefficients of the product of two functions with the help of the Lebanese theorem. Thank you so much.